We are currently led to believe that the combustion engines we know that are fitted in petrol and diesel cars are basically going to be made obsolete possibly within the next decade. At the end of March 2021, there were 38.6 million licensed vehicles in Great Britain. When one considers that if all those vehicles were in fact electric, then they would all have to charge up at least once every night. So that would be 38 million vehicles being charged up at any one given time during any 24 hour period. Looking at those statistics, you immediately realize that the electric car is by no means green whatsoever. In fact, it's probably worse than any current combustion engine. Now, if these vehicles could all be charged up in a green renewable way, as in with solar or maybe wind energy, then obviously that would mean it's a bloody good idea. Or so we are encouraged to keenly believe. However, solar farms and wind turbines are not green to produce and manufacture. They involve a lot of very costly materials, which at the end of the day don't always balance out with what is deemed as being renewable energy. Renewable energy is energy that doesn't involve any waste or cost to the environment whatsoever. That is green. Anything else is a fallacy. Looking at the old wind pumps that frequent the rivers of the Norfolk Broads, we can see that the products used to produce these windmills and pumps, namely wood, brick and metal, are in fact materials that make it feasible sources of power. When compared to the resources required to produce and manufacture a modern huge wind turbine, they are totally out of balance in every shape and form. So the future of electric cars is probably non-sustainable in modern times, especially when you consider where the raw materials are sourced from and how they are sourced on an ethical and environmental basis. An electric car can draw over seven kilowatts of electricity to charge up in the night time. That is the equivalent of running seven kettles at any one time. Nothing green about that whatsoever. Now times that by the number of electric cars on charge across any nation at any given time. At the time of producing this video in August 2021, people can go into Tesco supermarket car park and plug in their electric car for free and get a top up. So while you have 10 electric car owners sitting there having their cars charged by electricity whilst they do their shopping, there is in fact now the equivalent of 70 kettles being boiled whilst they're in a state of charge. To fully charge an electric car at home costs around five pounds. To charge an electric vehicle to 80% at a public rapid charger, it costs around seven to 10 pounds and can be achieved between 20 and 30 minutes. Therefore, an electric vehicle is only green when it's being driven down the road because it's not producing any emissions. In order to get the car to the stage where it can be driven down the road, the electric car uses so many resources that it will never be able to be green or sourced from renewable energy. It is a fallacy. The reality of the situation is that the only renewable source of power that can be used to power vehicles along a highway is to be powered by hydrogen. The governments of the world know this, but hydrogen power is not being promoted. That is why when you drive around most countries and finding a hydrogen top up point for your vehicle is as rare as hen's teeth. So how does this affect the boating industry? Let's take the Norfolk Broads in England, for example. A lot of the boats on the Norfolk Broads waterways are full of old diesel engines like BMCs and Perkins from times long past. They are neither fitted with particulate filters or any form of the catalytic converter whatsoever. This obviously creates concern because it basically means that the admissions of these pleasure boats are in fact quite horrific. 
with cars that have combustion engines now being phased out within the next decade, it means that already the pleasure boat industry is being targeted and penalised for being powered by fossil fuels. The Broads Authority on the Norfolk Broads has already used climate change as an excuse to raise the fees payable for the Broads Authority tolls. This is absolutely ridiculous because raising the tolls does not by any means whatsoever have any effect on climate change. It is basically a means of charging people more than they need to be charged. Being the owner of a sailboat I have looked into converting my boat into an electrically powered sailboat. The boat is 27 feet long and it is made of GRP and currently has a 1500 BMC diesel in. To convert it to a pancake Lynch motor would cost somewhere in the region of four to five thousand pounds. And if I was to install a liquid cooled electric motor such as one from Fisher Panda, then that cost is believed to be around 25,000 pounds. The infrastructure for charging electric boats and the financial availability and attainability of electric motors is very much out of the reach of most people. The idea of converting pleasure boats on the Norfolk Broads to electric motors is probably not sustainable because at the end of the day you'll then have to introduce loads of charging points. The situation at the end of the day is that if people want to make pleasure boats green on waterways such as the Norfolk Broads, they realistically have two options. One, they go back to using sails, or they introduce hydrogen powered boat engines. Realistically, I think we're very unlikely to see either one of those two options. Thank you.